Hey everybody, I just took the new update yesterday, full self-driving beta version 10.69.2.3. And uh, from the release notes, I didn't see a lot of big updates with it, but I thought I would take it out and see how we are doing with the new update. So right off the bat, we're doing a Chuck's uh, style left turn, Chuck Cook style left turn. And the car had really good uh, spacing entry into the median waiting for traffic and then proceeding on. So very nice job. Uh, if you want to see more of those types of turns, uh, left turns, I do have another video up on my channel uh, with the previous version. I didn't expect to see any major updates with this version in that style of left turn, but uh, I could test it intensively. If you'd like to see that, just leave a comment for me down below. So we're gonna head now to Downtown Eau Claire, gonna make a quick stop by Mayo Hospital here in Eau Claire. And so we'll get some city uh, street driving, suburban city street style driving. So right away here we are at a right hand turn, just waiting for traffic on our left hand side. Uh, very appropriate yield right here, no traffic behind us. Uh, we are clear and the car is beginning to creep forward and then it commits to the turn. So very nice job. So far, so good. Got a car up here turning left, so we're slowing down, waiting for the lane to clear, and then accelerating back up to the set speed. So I do have it at 32 miles an hour, just two miles over the speed limit. And I feel that that's not too aggressive in terms of driving. It helps the car have a little bit of time to anticipate problems, uh, but it's not too slow for flow of traffic. So this little section looked pretty good. We didn't see any issues with uh, lane discipline. It maintained the center of the lane very nicely, right between the double yellow lines on the left and the bike lane on the right. Going through a couple of corners here. Uh, we're going to arrive at our first destination on this leg of the journey. So we do have a little bit of phantom braking. I think that there is a car coming in from the left uh, just back there at that intersection and so our car was just slowing down enough to detect if that car was going to be pulling out in front of us. Um, everything looks safe, so we went back up to the speed. Again, we do have another car on the left-hand side on this corner and a little bit of phantom braking. Uh, not significant phantom braking. I would say it only slowed down a couple of miles an hour, but it is perceptible sitting in the car. You can't really feel that on video, but uh, I do feel just a little bit of a, a, a lurge forward or surge forward as the car slows down for, for, that, um, for that phantom braking episode. And we're going to make a right hand turn here. So a little aggressive on the turn, but it picked a line through there that was very nice through that intersection. Um, in terms of how I would take the turn as a human driver, I would have gone just a little more gradual through the turn and, and more uh, consistent acceleration. The car really accelerated once it committed into that turn and uh, I could definitely feel some of the G-forces uh, pulling me to the side. All right, so here we are at the back side of the hospital. This is our first destination. I'll reset autopilot and we'll uh, try another destination here. So we're gonna continue downtown Eau Claire on some uh, suburban city streets. The reason I like this drive is it has a fair amount of traffic, pedestrians and cars that are parked on the side of the road that our car has to maneuver around to continue on its way. So here's an example of that. And our car does creep right to the center line. Perfect job getting around that. We're gonna make a left-hand turn up at this stop sign. This is an unprotected left turn, two-way stop. So we stop here. We should get a hold limit on the screen, we do. 
and I've got a message autopilot creeping forward, checking for visibility. I see one car coming up from the right. We're pausing for that, nothing from the left. Yeah, we should be clear to go. Nice job, perfect spacing, perfect timing with the turn. Uh, I don't feel like it crept too far forward into the intersection to represent, uh, to be a traffic hazard for cars coming in from the left-hand side. Got our car signaling right, but it's just a corner here. It did shade out the lane that we were in as blue, indicating that it wanted to navigate to that area. Um, at this point, I would expect to see a turn signal. There it is. And we've got a stop light intersection. So we're appropriately stopped at that. It's a red light. We can turn on red. I do have one, tra one car coming in from the left, and we did get a green light, so we're proceeding through that. Get nice and smooth, no issues. I like that turn a lot better than the previous right turn that we made. It was a lot more smooth. So at this intersection, we do have a red light. I see a green arrow. The car does distinguish appropriately between which uh, stoplight is ours to proceed through the intersection. And we'll get a green light here in just a second, and then we'll be on our way. We do see that on the screen, really nice visualization of everything around us uh, right here on the screen. And that's very consistent with what I've seen in previous versions of full self-driving. One thing I noticed about this version of full self-driving versus previous versions is that I have a lot fewer interventions and I I hate to say that too soon on this drive, but so far I've had no interventions on this drive. And the car's been very exceptional in terms of navigation and continuing on the route uh, that I designated. Uh, no issues with lane discipline, but we're gonna try a couple of areas that do historically have some issues with lane discipline. Uh, coming up here on the next leg. Okay, so the next leg of our trip is going to take us to CVS Pharmacy. Uh, just on Brackett Avenue here in Eau Claire. So that's going to finish our downtown route. And take us through what hopefully will be a, a construction zone still. So we could see uh, how well the car does navigating through construction area with, uh, with lane marking difficulties. Well, here we are at a right turn. No traffic coming in from the left or the right. Car is creeping forward for visibility. Definitely took its time on that turn, but it did com complete it, did as execute it very well. Didn't see any issues with it. And nice uh, slow speed going past these parked cars. I like that. I'm gonna take a left-hand turn at this four-way stop. So we do see the SUV uh, marked in blue here, which shows that it's going to be in our path car waited for its turn and it took the left turn very appropriately. It's definitely an improvement of what I've seen in previous versions with four-way stops as well. Uh, Two-way and four-way stops really seems to have mastered with this version, uh, getting through those types of intersections. Although I haven't intensively tested it with uh, a lot of traffic and pedestrians at a four-way stop. So I'm gonna build that into an upcoming drive scenario just to put it through its paces and make sure. All right, here we are at a right-hand turn, red light. Intersection's clear and we're good to go. So here's a construction area I mentioned. The right lane is closed up here and the traffic does actually merge into the oncoming side uh, of the lane. So we're gonna see how the car does. The traffic cones are down right here. That is gonna be an intervention. I did have to take over because it did not know that the lane was closed at that point. Now that we've got traffic cones here, 
Uh, the car should be in the correct lane to proceed straight through this intersection and continue on the route. So I'm not going to fault the car for that intervention, uh, only because the cones were not set up properly on the road to mark the merge into the left-hand lane. Right, we've got a green light and we're proceeding through this intersection. We're going to see how it does up here at this intersection. This is where it usually wants to take a left-hand turn. And it proceeded through. There's a little jerky going through, but actually it did very well. It did land in the correct lane and continued through the intersection without any issues. So as we come up on this next intersection, it'll be a stoplight. We'll be taking a left-hand turn. I do want you to pay attention on the screen to the cars that are depicted. Uh, if we see any pedestrians, if we're lucky enough to see pedestrians, uh, we're gonna check those out as well. But what I wanna see is whether or not it's showing cars that are going to be in our path as blue versus what we see when we look forward out the window. So we do have the green light. Uh, for the moment, actually just changed to red light. And we do see the one pedestrian depicted right up here and we see the other vehicles. I don't see anybody in our path, so nothing showing up as blue at this point. Should see this guy, the pedestrian crossing in blue uh, but we're not in motion yet, so that, I think that would be appropriate for that not to be indicated as such. Again, you see on the visualization, just excellent, excellent uh, depiction of all the cars that are around us and going through the intersection. The only cars it doesn't see very well are those that are blocked or blinded by, uh, by a larger vehicle like this truck next to us here. And we've got the green light, we're going through that intersection. Well done, that was very smooth, nice acceleration, good spacing with the car in front of us. Uh, everything through that part of the drive went very well. On the screen also in the visualization, you see something that's going to be going away uh, at some point in the near future. Uh, these yellow arcs here are the ultrasonic sensors, uh, proximity sensors for the vehicle that's showing something near the car. So it's yellow when it's close and it's red when it's very close to let you know. And from what I understand, those are going to be uh, removed from the vehicles that are being manufactured uh, moving forward. So unfortunately, that's going to be something that uh, is not going to be available in future updates of the Tesla. But um, I think with the cameras and the vision system and after AI day seeing all the uh, the technology development that's going in around the cameras I think that those will be a moot point and unnecessary for uh, uh, for the future of full self-driving excellent green light we're moving forward So one thing I mentioned in terms of uh, interventions previously, I did have to take the wheel during that construction zone. However, other than that, I have not had to intervene. By intervening, I mean nothing, like no uh, steering the steering wheel, pressing the accelerator, hitting the brake. Uh, I haven't had any interaction with the car other than just occasionally touching the steering wheel to let the car know that I'm paying attention and that I'm present. Uh, as it continues on this drive. We're going to make a left-hand turn. We've got a car turning left there, so had to wait for that car to get through to get into this turn lane. And we're at the end of leg three. All right, so I've got the final destination plugged in, we're going to go to Sacred Heart Hospital on Claremont Avenue. So I was hoping that the car would actually make a turn back there. Looks like it's kind of picking its way through the parking lot. So this is interesting. I'm going to let it go and see what happens.
All right, so it's going to find a street. All right, so a little bit of difficulty in navigation there. I would have expected it to take an immediate right turn uh, to get onto Hastings Way, but it was kind of interesting. I don't think it's really a factor of full self-driving as much as it is uh, the map uh, clarity to the to the vehicle in parking lots. And so it was having to get out of that parking lot. There's actually an exit right at that point where I could have taken a right and then another right and been on the street that I intended to be on. Uh, but as you notice, I still didn't intervene with that. I let the car go through what it normally would have wanted to figure out to get back on a route. It did land to a new route. It recalculated the route. Uh, but this is fine. This is a good alternate uh, route to our destination. Just wasn't the original route that I intended to take. So we're at a uh, stoplight. This is a no right turn on red. We're not actually going to turn right, so no issues here. Uh, one thing I like at this stoplight is that we are parked very well for uh, positioning in the intersection. So there's a crosswalk, a big crosswalk in front of us, and one immediately to our left, which is a bike lane. And the car has positioned itself perfectly right in the middle of the lane that it should be in and stopped right at this intersection. So it did not position the car to be a traffic hazard for pedestrians or bikes uh, or other vehicles. And that was very nice. So there's a little bit of confusion there. I think the car was going to follow that other car, but that other car is parking. Uh, it identified that and it corrected itself. Continued on in the lane that we intended it to be in and got up to the stoplight. So we do have a stoplight with a right turn that we could make on red. And with no traffic coming in from the left, uh, the car does choose to make that turn. Uh, so it's very nicely done. All right, so as we come up on our destination, I just wanted to rate the drive overall to see how I felt it went versus other full self-driving tests that I've done. And I would give this a solid nine, nine and a half out of 10. Uh, the two things that I think held it back were how the car behaved in the construction zone. But again, because the cones were down and the zone was not very well marked, I don't fault the car for that. But comparing full self-driving to a human driver, I felt like it didn't really know what to do in that situation. Uh, the other situation didn't really know what to do it, it was in the parking lot where I would have just made a right hand turn to get onto the street, the destination, but the car really didn't know uh, how to get from the parking lot onto the street. And so it continued through the parking lot in a little bit of confusion. I did let the car run its course and I felt like it did a very nice job with that. So that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.